Today, we're gonna to be doing a step-by-step -step on how I built this scenic base for my Desert Panzer III. These little bases are very easy to put together, and honestly, I should be making these more often because it makes your finished model look so much more presentable by giving it context for its markings and weathering. For example, here, this model is supposed to be in North Africa, so I can make sure that's obvious by placing it in a desert scene. It also looks much better on your display shelf or on the contest table. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial, and now let's get started. The base of my base is this round 6 inch painting board I picked up for cheap at the local art store. I think most people would go a little larger, but I'm aiming for the bare minimum here to not detract from my model, which is supposed to be the center of attention. I just want to give it a little scene for context. Now we all know a flat base is very boring. The critical aspect here is to add just the bare minimum amount of vertical terrain here. I'm using this product called sculpt mold which is kind of like a plaster-ish, but, but more fibrous material. It's water-based, you mix it up, it dries in about 24 hours, you can sand it. It's perfect for making model bases. However, you could also use plaster of Paris or uh, clay, something like that. It'll work the same. I taped up the edges here to have a nice clean edge at the end of my vertical terrain there. And then the next day I sanded it roughly with an old sanding sponge just to smooth it out a little bit. It doesn't need to be perfect. I just want it to be, you know, decently presentable, especially the edges though. I want those to be nice and smooth. Next up, I essentially primed the base with some black acrylic paint, just applied it over the whole thing for two main reasons. The first one is that there was a little bit of white powder that was coming off some of the sculpt mold that I didn't want to get in any of the later effects because white doesn't look natural. This really helped to seal that in. And also this helps me to just see how the terrain is looking and if I needed to, I could have made any adjustments at this point. The real base color for the base is Tamiya XF78. I chose this because this is the same color I airbrushed for some dust effects on my model. And that way my model will look cohesive with the scene it's in. Now I was ready for the real dirt effects on our base. To secure these in place, I'm mixing up some matte medium, which is fancy artist glue. You could just use PVA or white glue instead. And I'm thinning it with some water and a drop of dish soap to remove the surface tension. I apply a generous coating of this over the entire base. Don't worry, it'll dry clear. And this is going to secure the dirt effects we're going to apply right on top of this. Now what looks better to represent dirt than actual dirt? Here I have some fine earth and some more chunky coarse earth. This is actually dirt from Germany that my modeling buddy Hamilgar Barkas sent me. He's got a YouTube channel that is very inspirational for my base work here. And this dirt looks perfect for scale scenes like this. So I apply the uh, thicker stuff around the edges of my road. And then for the actual hard packed tracks through the little road here, I'm using the finer earth. Then I use the back of my spoon here to pulverize any chunks that were remaining and also to help flatten it out. And everything was secured with one final round of my glue mixture, this time more carefully applied with a little pipette here. And this is where the drop of dish soap is critical because I don't want this to beat up and move around the dirt. I just want it to soak into it. So by removing the surface tension with that wetting agent like soap, that really helps this to flow nicely and not disturb the terrain. When it's still wet, it's also very important to make some marks in our road to make it look like an actual road. So here I'm using my model to make some impressions of tracks in the terrain. And I'm also using a wheel from another project to make some wheel marks. Nothing works better than the real thing, right? With the glue dry, I am very pleased with this. We have some excellent textures and colors going on in our base, though it is a little bit darker than the dust effects on my model. So to fix that, we're gonna break out the XF78 once again. 
and we're gonna lightly airbrush just a thin tint over the base to lighten it a little bit. I don't wanna repaint it, just give it a little bit of a, a lightening here, focusing mainly on the tracks on the road. Again, I don't wanna repaint those beautiful, very textures and colors we have. I also played around on some of these harder packed areas and modeled some more of this paint to make them look a little bit drier and lighter. And there we go, that looks much better and it matches our model perfectly. Now, if you just want a dirty road, uh, this is perfect as is. However, I'm looking for a little bit more interest on my scene. So we can add some dry grass tufts and so on. Here I have two different colors and sizes from AK. They are Step and Wild, my two favorite colors. I think these two will have a little bit of variation between them, but will look nice on our dry, dusty scene. These are stickable, so they are self-adhesive. However, uh, they do need some glue to actually stick properly on the model. So once again, I use my matte medium to help secure them in place. One thing I learned from my model railroading days is the expression trees or whatever you're working with. They're like roses, they look good in bunches. What that expression is referring to is don't evenly distribute your tufts or your trees or your bushes over the surface. You want to have them in little groups and clusters because that's how they work in real life. Just a little bit of grass tufts here and there has really transformed our scene and made it look a lot more lively. However, what makes it more desert than actually having some cacti? So I'm gonna use the legendary Dragon DS Cacti set, which is included in a few dragon sets like their Tiger and their Panzer III. And it's a bit of a meme actually because it's ridiculous. Like, give me a figure, not a cactus. To beef up the fragile DS plastic, first I primed it with some Mr. Service or Mahogany primer. And then I applied a base coat of a mix of about equal parts khaki and medium blue from Tamiya. This gave me that kind of weird blue-green color and also khaki is one of the colors I use painting my model. So again, we can get that cohesive look. I also dry brush them with a mix of light green here. Dry brushing is when you take a very thin application of paint on your brush, and then you just lightly brush it over the raised detail in the model to give them highlights to pop out that detail. The separation between each section of the cactus was painted with some vampiric flesh from AK. Again, just going off a reference photo that I had taken myself. And now I'm applying a brown wash. This is kind of the opposite of the dry brushing. The dry brushing added some highlights to the raised detail. The brown wash adds shadows around the edges of detail, but the effect is the same and makes the details pop out. And I think these actually look really nice for just a little bit of paint work there. They look pretty decent, but we're missing something. That's right, the prickles. That's what makes it a cactus, right? So my genius idea here was to hit them with some hairspray, which is essentially a glue. And then very, very quickly after applying the hairspray, I sprinkled them with some very short static grass. Now the hairspray dries really quick, so you only have a few seconds to put on the grass, so it took a few layers back and forth. But before long, I got a pretty convincing look. At the end, I had to take a pair of tweezers and yank off a few of these that were obviously too long. And then to seal everything in, I hit them with some VMS matte varnish. And this is just airbrushed on, you know, as you airbrush your model. And there's my finished cactus. I'm very happy with these. I think they look hilarious, but they really set the scene. And these were just pinned in place with a little bit of the matte medium glue, but they need a little bit of help to stand up. So that's what the paint bottles are for, right? Our last step was to paint the edge of the wooden base with the same black acrylic we used earlier. This really makes it nice and presentable. Though some people will use another color than black, 
black is my style. And here is our finished base. I am super happy with this. For only about three evenings worth of work, I really gotta do this more often. It makes our finished model look so much more presentable and it gives it a nice scene to live in, giving some context to whatever weathering effects we have on the model. For example, this is that harsh, rocky Tunisian dust effect, but you could also have a Panzer Grey model with very similar dust effects, but it could be in Russia 1941, in which case a grassy scene would also make that more obvious. Like I said, this is very easy to do. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I really recommend giving something like this a shot for your next model. If you have any questions or comments, please post them on below. I always root through them all. And if you like my work, you can support me on Patreon for just $1 a month. That really helps me making these videos. As always, I will see you guys next time. Until then, stay safe and happy modeling.